Good evening. Good evening. We're going to wait a couple of minutes for the others uh, because uh, we are going to start with the session number four. We are ending this first week. Imagine that now we are ending four days of work. So time is going very fast and we are going to have three more weeks. And uh, at the end, we are going to feel like uh, we don't have uh, the complete uh, days because it don't feel like that. So we are ending uh, the first week already and we are going to uh, continue the next uh, Monday with the week number two. And we are going to end with week number two and we are going to have uh, two more weeks. And when we um, think about it, we are going to have uh, just a couple of days to complete the, the course. So time is running very, very fast. So we are going to begin with this week number one, the end of the week number one. Hello. Okay, let me get the document and also the, uh, the platform. Okay, uh, we are going to begin with this uh, session, uh, making a little review of the topics that we were developing yesterday. Um, we were talking about some structures that we can use in English. And in this case, we were seeing these structures that are the uh, English tenses in passive voice. And in this case, we have the present continuous tense, and also we have the present perfect we tense. Need to check. Good evening. So in that case, we were uh, learning about those uh, structures and we were seeing uh, in which um, spaces or which uh, changes we can give to those uh, sentences when we are talking in passive and in active voice. And also we have here the usage of uh, the perfect, uh, the present perfect passive that was the last thing I was reading to you. And I told you that I, um, yesterday I told you that I will uh, put uh, this information into the document and now you have that information there. So in this case, we have the usage of the present perfect passive and we are just going to read the six different uh, usage that we can give to the present perfect passive and those are to talk about experience and achievements uh, to change or to talk about changes over time to talk about incomplete actions with expected ends um, to talk about continuous actions starting in the past also we use the present perfect to talk about past actions with result in present and number six, multiple actions at different times. So I add this information yesterday uh, because I was talking about it, the usage of uh, the present perfect and I told you that I, I will do it. So in this case, you have that information on the document. So the other thing that we are going to talk about that I told you before is the 
the topic the, of the reduction. Um, it is supposed that yesterday we are, uh, we're talking about that uh, topic and now we're going to see something about reduction and I will explain something because I have this information here. But I need to go to the platform because I need to show you the video in which we have the information of reduction. When we see and listen the information that they have about reduction, I will explain something, but in this case, it's not like we are going to focus on that topic and we are not like uh, going uh, very deep in this topic because it's kind of uh, complicated and uh, this topic has a lot of information. So in that case, we're just going to um, talk about some examples and all of the things. So let me go to the um, video because in this case, it's kind of short. So here I, I have the video. Let's practice your... And in this case, it's talking about pronunciation. Let's hear the video. Your pronunciation. Listen and notice how the auxiliary verbs is, are, has, and have are reduced in a conversation. Listen and practice. Fresh water's being wasted. Too much trash has been created. Newspapers are being thrown away. Parks have been lost. Let's practice your pronunciation. Listen and notice how the auxiliary verbs is, are, has, and have are reduced in a conversation. Listen and practice. Fresh water's being wasted. Too much trash has been created. Newspapers are being thrown away. Parks have been lost. So if you can notice, this is like a very, very short video in which you are just listening uh, the way they are pronouncing the, um, we, can, uh, we can say the auxiliary verb is, and in this case is like we are not pronouncing um, the complete word in this case. Um, and we are going to see some information about that part, but in this case, it's going to be kind of uh, high or long because it has a lot of information. But I have this one for you to read with me the information that we have about the reduction. And in this case, it's restrictions on auxiliary reduction that is preceding context. And it says that the reduction of is and has take place regardless of the nature of preceding word whose bit seen. The man I told you about here, what I says, na business of yours, neither Gloria nor Godfrey's even being to Pakistan. The man I told you about that, that ferry said he was going to send his review, just going to answer your question. I've always known that sounds crazy. And in this case, we have some examples in which you can see that they have an S, but um, in that case, it's talking about the is, and they are just pronouncing, in this case, we can uh, say that they are just pronouncing the S. They are not pronouncing like, some, some is crazy. Some is crazy. In this case, they are saying that sounds crazy. Sounds crazy, but they are not talking about possession. They are talking about the verb to be, but they are reducting that sound. So in that case, um, people that talk in English uh, use that reductions when they are speaking because they um, 
speak very fast or talk very fast, and they make that sound. So in that case, we are not just um, pronounce all the words that we have on a sentence. In this case, we can make this kind of reductions. And it continues saying, know that reduce is and has are realized as, and we have some a specification in which cases we're going to make the reduction. This, Jan's, batch here. In the same way as the third singular present ending of verbs and the genitive and plural endings of nouns. The occurrence of S or Z is the result or a straightforward real progressive voice in assimilation. The maintenance of a syllabic in is might be explained either by a restriction on auxiliary reduction or by a vowel insertion rule applying after auxiliary reduction. And the choice between these two analyzed um, do not affect the discussion immediately following. It is natural to suppose that just as the reduced form of is or has correspond to the S, Z, and is. Inflectional endings, so they reduce forms of will, had will, and correspond to the T, D, I, D. Infectional endings, the, re the regular past tense and past participle endings, but also will had contract after vowels. And we have some example here, and we add the D, that is uh, corresponding to will or to had. Married, go, anyone who knows, should go, and in this case, it's just um, making it easier to pronounce. And we are like saving time when we are making these reductions because we are not using all the words that we have in a sentence. Maybe we uh, prefer to pronounce all the words that we have on a sentence because um, we feel better in that way because we are learning another language but they that are the, uh, they have the English as a mother tongue or the first language, they don't uh, use that complete uh, pronunciation of the words. But in this case, it's just for sounding more natural that we are going to reduce uh, those words. And also we can use um, informal words to express something. For example, when we are using going to, they uh, don't use going to in all of the conversations. They also use a gonna. So in that case, they are using different expressions to reduce the time in which they are speaking. But in this case, we're not going to talk about all of the rules that we have about this topic because there are a lot of information and we need to have more time to talk about the reduction of the auxiliary and the pronunciation and all of that things. And that is a um, complete different space because we are having this uh, um, reduced space in which we are learning how to communicate with others and how to give information and how to express our ideas in English. So in this case, it's a complete different topic. And for that reason, we are going to um, to end the, the, the part of the reduction here because we have a lot of things. I have a lot of information about reduction, but in that case, it is not necessary that we talk about all of the rules and all of the exceptions and all of that things. We need to know that uh, people who speak English as a first language, they use this reduction too. Uh, save time when they are talking because they like to uh, speak very, very fast. And they are very like, uh, they found it like something very natural in that case. And that's why we need to know this kind of topic because we need to sound more natural and not like we are kind of robots when we are talking, but it's kind of hard because we are learning rules 
and we are learning structures and we are learning how to create sentences following a formula and all of the things. And in some cases, when you are listening to someone that is speaking English, um, you hear different things that the ones you are learning. And it can be very confusing when, for example, you are using um, GS at the end of the third person singular and they are not using it because they give the information, they express the ideas. And that's the part. If the people understand their ideas, they are okay with that. But um, with us, it's completely different because we need to, to um, follow those steps uh, when we are talking in English, following the specific rules, following the specific times and chances and all of that things. But we are going to continue with the other part that we are going to, we are going to um, listen a conversation. I mean, I guess I have the conversation here. In this case, we are going to do something. We are going to listen a conversation talking about a given solutions to a specific problem. I'm going to read the first part of the conversation and then we are going to listen the second part of the conversation. And we are going to um, explain what are the ideas that they have about that problem they are talking about. So let me put the conversation here and we are going to hear and read the conversation that is this one. And you can find it on the platform, this conversation. What can we do? What can we do? And we have a Carla and Andy. So we are going to listen the first part and then I'm going to um, put the audio program in which you are going to find the second part of this conversation. And you need to put attention or you need to listen carefully because we are going to make some questions about the conversation. So in the first part, we have this uh, conversation. Look at those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there is a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yeah, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top executives. So in this case, remember uh, the video that we were like listening and watching yesterday, that is the intro video in which we were talking about the uh, problems with um, climate change, uh, the problems that we have in our world nowadays. And in this case, they are talking about pollution. They are talking about um, uh, in this case, companies pumping chemicals into rivers and they are making something bad to the environment. So in this case, they are seeing they have a big problem in that uh, space. And they are talking about some solution that uh, or some things that they can do to change that, um, that problem. Because the problem is that the, the, um, the industries are um, pumping chemicals into the rivers and that is killing fishes and also is poisoning the water. And they have some ideas about the things that, that they can do um, to change that situation. But if you can see at the end, 
Carla is saying that um, her uncle is one of the top executives of that um, of that place. So we are going to listen at the second part of the conversation, and we are going to listen what are the ideas that they have uh, or the things that they can do because the question is what do they decided to do in that case what are the things that they are planning to do to change that problem remember that we are talking about solutions and in this case is giving solutions to that problem the problem is that they are affecting the environment and Carla and Andy are going to um, tell some ideas um, that they can perform to change that situation. So let's go to the uh, platform and we are going to listen the conversation or the second part of the conversation in which they are explaining their ideas. So let me take this. Hey, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top executives. What do So we're going to listen to the second part and pay attention to the second part of the conversation. Andy and Carla decide to do. Wait a minute. Before we do anything, shouldn't we make sure that we've got our facts straight? Absolutely. The best thing to do is to monitor the situation over the next several weeks to see what exactly is happening. How do we do that? Well, we can take pictures of the river and even take water samples to see how bad the situation is. We can get some friends to help. Okay. And maybe I could talk to my uncle about it. Oh, no. I don't think that's a good idea. Not yet, anyway. Why not? I don't think we want to say anything to anyone until we have a clearer picture of what is going on. After we've monitored the situation for a while, then we can decide whether we need to have a meeting with a representative of the company to tell them what we've discovered. Okay, Carla? Okay. Did you listen to the entire conversation? Okay, we're going to listen to the second part of the conversation again. And we are going to make our um, ideas about the solutions they are uh, planning or the things that they are planning to do to change the, um, the problem. So let's hear again. What do Andy and Carla decide to do? Wait a minute. Before we do anything, shouldn't we make sure that we've got our facts straight? Absolutely. The best thing to do is to monitor the situation over the next several weeks to see what exactly is happening. How do we do that? Well, we can take pictures of the river and even take water samples to see how bad the situation is. We can get some friends to help. Okay. And maybe I could talk to my uncle about it. Oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Not yet, anyway. Why not? I don't think we want to say anything to anyone until we have a clearer picture of what is going on. After we've monitored the situation for a while, then we can decide whether we need to have a meeting with a representative of the company to tell them what we've discovered. Okay, Carla? Okay. Did you listen to Okay, there we have the second part of the conversation. And now, what they, um, what are the things that they are talking about? What are the things that they are going to do to change that situation? Can you mention some of the action that they are going to perform? They are going to take some, some samples of the water. Ah, they are going to take some um, samples. Uh-huh. Some samples of the water. 
What other thing they are going to do? They're going to take pictures. Ah, take they are going to take pictures. Good. They are going to wait until not, not to tell nothing, anything to to her aunt, to her uncle until they have the information. Ah, the information. good because she is saying that she can talk with her uncle, but uh, Andy is telling her that it is not like um, the best idea because they need to have more information about the situation. And they need to make uh, some uh, uh, studios to the samples of water. And uh, Andy says something that they are going to do in the several next weeks. What they are going to do? Make sure call the situation to, to be washing maybe the, the place or Call to the call to the, the television medios. Ah, they have another ideas in the first part of the conversation, because in that case, um, they were saying that, for example, we have the first thing, Andy said. One thing to do about it is to talk about to talk to the company's management. That's the first idea that they have. Talk about the situation with the company's management. But in that case, go um, through that situation is not very a uh, good thing because they don't have any uh, proof about the, the situation. Then he said another way to stop them is to get a TV company. I mean, TV station to run a story on it. It's like to make a, or to talk about. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the best option. That one is a very, very good option because the TV uh, program uh, or the TV station, it's going to make a review of the situation and it's going to make bad reviews on the company because they are going to tell them, ah, you are like making something bad because you are pumping some chemicals into the river and you are making people get sick and the fish are dying and all of that things. That is a very good idea. And then they have the other ideas. And one of these also is to, to monitor the situation over the next several weeks to see what exactly is happening. Because in that moment, they see something. But if they make this um, review of maybe two or three weeks, they are going to have more information that they can use against these companies and tell them, I have proofs that you are doing something bad. Then we have the things that we use, uh, do, were saying that is taking pictures of the uh, fish, the river, uh, the outside of the company. Also, they are going to take some water samples to see how bad the situation is because they are going to take those samples to some laboratory or something like that to make um, studies in which they can say um, what elements, what chemicals the water has. And also it said that they can um, take some friends or they can get some friends to help. But Carla have another idea and this one is not very good or it's not the best option. And that idea is to talk about uh, to talk about the situation with the uncle, but Andy say that is not the best option because they need to have the elements or the proofs to make uh, like a formal situation because maybe we can go to a place and we can say ah you have this problem and you are doing this bad, and you have this and this and those and that and all of the things. But if we don't have anything 
to prove that situation, we are not going to do anything. But I think, as you said, the best option for this situation is to get a TV station to run a story on the problem. And that's the conversation that we have there about the uh, giving solutions to the problems. And we were talking about uh, that topic also um, in the previous days because we were talking about problems, we were talking about solutions and all of that things. So in this case, it's very uh, uh, easy to understand what are the elements that we need here. So we are going to continue because we are going to end the section number two right now because uh, um, I'm going to make a, 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 a little break. Remember that you need to be, uh, have completed your section number one and section number two. You need to have all the exercises done from those um, sections because you know that they are making evaluations every end of week. And in this case, because of the situation, the environmental situation that we had uh, this week, we were not working on Monday. So in this case, you have four those sections this day to complete to be on time on your activities. So if you uh, are not on time with the platform, you need to work on it because you are going to have problems at the end if you are not working on the platform. So you need to complete section one and section two for today. And that is just to remember something that you need to remember when you are working on this platform. So now we are going to continue and we are going to talk about solutions. But in this case, it's, um, we were talking about solutions, but we are going to use um, infinitive clauses and we are going to use uh, phrases with infinitive and we are going to use it for a solution but in this case I'm going to explain you what are the infinitive clauses and what are the phrases or the infinitive phrases in this case Yes, we have the infinitive clauses and we are going to talk about the infinitive phrases. We are going to divide it into two parts like we did yesterday. So we are going to see first what is an infinitive clause, what are the elements that we have, and what are the uses that we can give to, um, to that structure. And then we are going to um, talk about the infinitive phrases what are the uses and all of that uh, things. So let's begin with this explanation. I'm going to share again the screen. And so we are going to divide this topic into infinitive clauses. That is the first part. So in this case, what is an infinitive clause? That is the, the first thing that we need to know. What is an infinitive clause? It says that they are a group of words that contain an infinitive to plus base form of the verb as its main verb form. In this case, we are talking about verbs in its main form and they are included in this kind of sentences or in this kind of clauses. And you know that clauses are a, a small sentence um, connected together to make a complete meaning. But in this case, we are going to say that they are a group of words that contain an 
an infinitive as its main verb form. And we have different type of infinitive clauses and these types are based on having subject. And we have two different types of two infinitive clauses based on having or not having a subject. In this case is when we omit this subject. So in this case, we're going to talk about the two different uh, sentence or clauses that we have. One is the infinitive clause with a subject and the other one is infinitive clauses without subject. The subject of an infinitive clause is in the structure four plus noun. And we have some examples. We have number one for them, for them, the host. For them to host, I mean to host a party is entertaining. In this case, we're using for to make or to uh, divide uh, the clothes. And we have them because we're uh, talking about they, but in this case, we're using for them to host a party is entertaining. And this one is like the clause that we are using in this case. And we have here in the middle, we have the infinity form of the verb. For them to host a party is entertaining. Then we have for me, in this case, I am the subject. For me to speak three languages will, will be amazing. So in this case, for me to speak three languages well, this is the um, 
this is the clause and I have here the infinity form of the verb. So remember, clauses are short parts of sentences or short sentences that um, can be function alone or together with another part of the sentence. In this case, for me to speak three languages well, it's not like functioning well um, alone because it's incomplete the idea. But when we are adding, it will be amazing it's making some sense on the way on the idea that we are explaining. So in this case, we have two parts of clauses or two clauses that are short sentences working together. So in this case, for me to speak three languages well will be amazing. And in this case, we're just uh, focusing on this kind of um, sentence in which we can find the subject. In this case, it is not necessary to talk about uh, the, um, the clauses without subject. In this case, it's just with subject. And it has another one that uh, we have another two types in which we can have two infinitive or without the preposition to that they are called verb infinitive. In this case, we can also write um, some uh, verbs without the two and they are also infinitive verbs, but they have another uh, name in this case that are the verb infinity, but in this case, it's like, we are just going to focus on the most important part of the, of the structures. We are not going to see all the information because in this case, we have the infinity clause with subject and we are not going to see the infinity clause without subject. And in the other two types of clauses with infinity with two, we are not going to talk about that because we know that in this case is we are using the verb with the two. Así que lo que vamos a hacer es ver las partes más importantes de estas cláusulas. No vamos a meternos en todas las partes que tiene, sino que vamos a enfocarnos en unas cuantas, como en esta que es el, infinit el infinitivo con el sujeto y no vamos a ver el que no lleva sujeto. Y en el caso del otro tipo de, eh, de cláusula, vamos a ver el ver infinitive porque ya sabemos cómo se forma el infinitivo normal, que es el to, así como lo tenemos en los ejemplos. So in that case, we're not going to talk about some things that we already know about the topic. So in that case, we're not going to make, like we are going to talk about that part for um, one hour. So in that case, we're just going to have some elements of the topics. So in this case, it says that infinitive clauses, um, or there are two types of two infinitive clauses based on having or not having the preposition to. And we are going to see the second time that is the verb infinitive. And it says that normally an, an infinitive has the preposition to, but it is not an essential part of it. When an infinitive is used without the preposition to, it is called bar infinitive. In this case, it's not like it's going to change the meaning of the verb. In this case, is omit the use of to, and we have this per infinitive, and we have some examples. 
we have example number one of the verb infinitive and it is I made John leave. And in this case, we are using the verb without the preposition to. Because in that case, it's going to sound kind of weird. And if we say, I made John to leave. So in this case, I made John leave. And in the second one, we have help me open the door. Help me open the door. And in this case, the verb uh, infinitive is open the door. To open the door and open the door. And we use this kind of a uh, verbs very, very, um, it's very common to use that kind of uh, verbs. And it says that an infinitive, an infinitive clause often acts as the subject or object or complement of the main clause. So in this case, they can function as the uh, subject or the object or the complement of the main clause. And in this case, when we are using the infinitive clauses as subject, it says that an infinitive clause can be the subject of a sentence. After the infinitive clause, there is the verb be or other state verbs. In that case, when we are using the infinitive clause, as the subject of this main of these clauses, then after the um, infinitive clause, we are going to use is, or in this case, the verb to be, and a, also another state verbs. So in that case, we are going to have like that a, a structure. And we have an example. And it says, to swim after a meal is always wrong. To swim, that is the infinity verb. To swim after a meal. That's the first part of the, uh, the clauses, or this one is one part of the clause. And then we're going to add is, Always wrong. So in that case, we have two different parts or two different clauses. And this one is functioning as the subject because it's at the beginning of the sentence. And we have to swim after a meal is always wrong. In that case, we have the verb to be a after the clause. Then, when we have the infinitive clauses as object, an infinitive clause can be the object of a sentence. 
many verbs can be followed by an infinitive in the place of the direct object. And in this case, we have this uh, first uh, clause. I have the sign. I have the sign to go. Here we have the clause with the infinity part. To go is the uh, the space or is the thing in which we can see uh, in which place we have the infinity clause. To go to iron for my holidays. And if you can uh, see here, we have at the end of the sentence, we have the close with infinitive, but in this case it's yellow. So in that case, it is the object of the sentence. I have decided to go to Ireland for my holidays. And another one, remember, to take, and here we have the, uh, the clothes, to take your lunch box to school. And I will remove the color on remember. So in that place, we have uh, the clothes. One at the beginning that as functioning as the subject of the of the clauses or the subject of the sentence, and then we have at the end of the sentence and they are functioning as the um, the object of the sentence. Así que en esa parte tenemos las cláusulas con el infinitivo um, funcionando como sujeto y como objeto. Ya sabemos nosotros. Eh, el orden en el que en el que escribimos nuestras eh, nuestros objetos y nuestros sujetos en este caso como lo tenemos al principio nos funciona como el sujeto de esa oración porque ya tenemos dos partes de la misma oración y en el otro pues nos sirve como el objeto ya que va al final de nuestra oración y nos está sirviendo como eso como el objeto so in that case the use of the infinity verb using to or the bare infinitive is the way in which we're going to see um, in which places are the clauses with infinitive. And the number three, because we have three different uses for these clauses. One is for uh, the subject of the sentence, the object of the sentence, and for the complement, or in this case, as object complement. An infinitive or infinitive close acts as an object complement by describing by describing the intended. I mean, the intended or desired action of the direct object. And we have some examples. Janet's father Janet's father once wants her to go to a harbor. And in this case, we have here 
Janet's father, that is the subject of the sentence, wants, that is the verb, her, in this case, this one is the object of the sentence. And this one is the complement of that object. Janet's father wants her to go to Harvard. And then we have, he asked me, he asked me, and in this uh, short sentence we have he, that is the subject, us is the verb, me is the object. So here we have the object, me, and then we have the complement. He asked me to help him. And there we have the, um, the uses that we can give to the infinitive clauses. A subject, as complement, and as, a, a, I mean, the subject, the object, and the complement of the object. So in that case, we have three different uses that you can give to the uh, the infinitive uh, clauses but also we have i mean we have like four minutes and i will write uh, what is an infinitive phrase because we have the infinitive clauses and we have the infinitive phrase and we have this question what is an infinitive phrase And we have here that an infinitive phrase is the infinitive form of a verb plus any complements and modifiers. So the complement of an infinitive verb will often be its direct object and the modifier will often be an adverb. So I'm going to move this a little bit and I will add, um, let's see if I can find the image of an article that you have on the platform. Let me move this to the end of the document here you are going to find this um, article on the platform but also you are going to find it here on the document and i need you to read this article because we are going to make um a practice with this um with this article on monday so I need you to read this information because we are going to use it on Monday. So we are going to end the session here because it's time and we are going to see each other on Monday. Have a really good weekend and a really good night. See you on Monday. See you Monday. See you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night.
sharing, guys.